Hi, my name is Tonya Dishola and I have been living with sickle cell for the past 50 years. Many people with this disorder do not have the moral and particularly the financial support needed to overcome it. So we decided to do something about it. We started sickle cell advocacy with the aim of making society more aware about sickle cell and encouraging people with the disorder through moral, financial and psychological support. SAMI is, is an NGO dedicated to help people living with SCD. Actually, they provide the best free clinic, free drugs, and lots more. When I come to SAMI, I feel free, I feel lively. I feel like I'm with my family, with people that understand me fully, well enough to know what's wrong, and people I can confide in. I've been coming here since 2015. By that time, I had um, back pain. They asked us to go for x-ray. And then Sami, they were the ones that gave us the money for the x-ray. We came back, we told them the feedback that we have done the x-ray. They said it's scoliosis. And since then, they have been giving us drugs. Everything they have been giving us, all the drugs, is free. From that 2012, we have been coming. And aside from the, apart from the benefits we get through the drugs, then the check up, we will meet other children and other people with the disorder. And you will know that, yes, even with, with the disorder, there's still hope. I started SAMI uh, more out of a calling than anything else because I've been living with sickle cell for over five decades now. And um, I had a tremendous life living with sickle cell. Uh, but sometime in my life, uh, I wrote an autobiography and I was invited to a TV program um, back then. And um, somebody was like, okay, why don't you be an advocate for people with sickle cell? And I was like, no, that's not my, my problem. I have my own issues. But God, should I, should I say, forced my hand to start this NGO when I had a call from somebody who said, He's living with sickle cell. His parents don't want him to go to school because they feel he's going to die anyway. And that's when I realized there was really an issue that I had to be dealt with. And that's how I started the NGO. And basically it's to help people living with sickle cell and their families to live healthy, productive lifestyles. So I realized we had to be more involved with the people with sickle cell. It's not enough to just motivate them or inspire them. We had to get them to understand their health is very important in managing. And what we realize is that a lot of times because of financial issues or because of the challenges of going to a public um, health service or public hospital in this country, people leave their health issues till it's very late. And then they either need more money to solve the problem or they, they lose their loved one. So we decided to start a clinic to be a bridge between the person living with sickle cell and the hospital so that when we spot anything, we'll be able to notify them and if possible, help them so that they can get attention at an early stage. So we started this. Uh, Positive and Wellness Summit. I'm sure for a lot of you who have been able to be on this um, virtual event, you've been able to gain a lot over the past two days. And today will be no different as we have back to back guests who will inspire you and educate you to make a difference in your life, in your health, and in your surrounding and environment. So today we're going to start with a new guest. Don't forget this program is brought to you by Sickle Cell Advocacy and Management Initiative supported by Fidelity Bank and the public and um, 
Baramatu Impact Network. So we're going to start with our first guest. And I met this person, um, I can't remember, I, I, so many years back. I'm trying to even remember. <laughs> I'm glad today, they're getting old. <laughs> Who I met him. But um, he has inspired me uh, in so many ways and helped me to find a way to use creativity to bring healing to me as well. And if you can see the painting behind me, I'm the one who did it. So it's very, very, uh, um, it's a very great pleasure to invite you to meet Kule Adewale. But before I bring him on, let me show his bio. Kule Adewale graduated from Obafemi Awolowo University, Leif, Nigeria, with specialization in painting and art history. Then he went on to acquire other degrees and certifications from the US, UK, and South Africa in arts and medicine. With over a decade of experience as an artist and educationist, Kunle founded Tender Arts Nigeria in 2013, a social enterprise which aims to positively impact people with a focus on therapeutic arts and art education, amongst others. Projects that Kunle facilitated range from the therapeutic projects for displaced families suffering from post-traumatic stress disorders to children and adults with chronic and neurological disorders. He has 15,000 beneficiaries through his art programs in Nigeria, Ghana, Kenya, South Africa, and USA. His development works have featured on Al Jazeera, Routers, BBC Africa, TRT World, and many others. His community-based projects have been supported by several organizations, including Center for Arts in Medicine and U.S. Consulate in Lagos. In 2015, Kunle had the honor of meeting the United States President Barack Obama through the Mandela Washington Fellowship Award for Young African Leaders. He is an international advocate for persons living with cancer and sickle cell anemia and a vast member of the Earth Therapy Without Borders. He has won several awards. As a result of Kunle's impact in the field of arts and health globally, August 2nd was proclaimed by the mayor of Cincinnati, USA as the official Kunle Adewale Day. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's welcome Kunle Adewale to the Positive and Wellness Summit as he speaks on the art for healing the effectiveness of art in health and wellness. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Hello, Kule. How are you? I'm doing very well. In fact, when I was looking at your bio, I, I, I had to tell the audience, I had to edit. In fact, the voiceover person was like, this is a lot. <laughs> because you have asked chips so, so, so much. I, it's unbelievable. <laughs> it's good to have you. Thank you so much, sis. All right, so I'll leave it to it. You have your 30 minutes, and then I'll come back five minutes to your 30 minutes to give you a signal that your time is rounding up. Okay. Yeah, thank you so much. Um, uh, good afternoon, everyone, and good afternoon, wherever you are, um, anywhere in the world now. And uh, like, um, my bio actually read uh, about the work I do, not just in Nigeria alone, but around the world. And so today, basically, I'm going to be sharing with us. I'm going to be telling us a story about how I started my um, practice as an art and health practitioner, as a visual artist, as an art administrator, as a social uh, change maker, and also as a social innovator. So um, in 2013 precisely, um, I founded my organization, Art in Medicine, sorry, Tender Art Nigeria, uh, an organization that uh, has a focus on art education, therapeutic art and advocacy, among many others. So ever since then, we've really done quite a number of works. Uh, so far, I have founded three organizations between 2013 and now uh, founded Tender Art in 2013, founded uh, Art in Medicine Project in 2016, and I founded Art in Medicine Fellowship in 2018. 
And all of these three components are very strong um, platform to reaching more audience, a wider audience uh, on how we can further integrate arts uh, into community uh, spaces and also hospices, healthcare centers and hospitals, not just in Nigeria, but around the world. So I'm gonna be sharing with us um, 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 like a picture, uh, like a photo story, and I'm gonna be talking from there. I'm also gonna be uh, maybe playing a video just to show you uh, what and uh, what we'll be doing over time. Uh, first and foremost, let me just appreciate um, um, Antitoin for the privilege to just join you all today to speak uh, on art and um, the role of art in healing and also the role that art play in wellness and well-being too. So I'm gonna play uh, a music. Let me see if I can share my screen. Um, okay. Okay. So Kule, let me see. Can you send it? I'm not sure you can send it. I don't think you can. You may have to send it to me. Oh, really? Let me see. Oh, not no. Like <laughs> I sent oh, a no. message. Oh. Maybe this. Yeah. Uh, no. So I'm not enabled to share from my own side. No, I don't think so. You can try, but I don't think so. I've, I've, I, I've, I've then, not seen. Okay, mm. then I can, then I can proceed with what I have, so that uh, okay, we don't then. keep people uh, waiting. Yes, yes, I can proceed okay. with what I have here. Yes, okay, all right. Yeah. So let me see. Let me share my screen. Okay, excellent. Oh. <sighs> I think I can. Can you see my screen now? Oh, let me show. Mm -hmm. Let's see, stop sharing. Sorry, I'm I'm used to Zoom and Google Meet, so so um, let me see. I'm sorry. Mm -mm. Can I can I share my screen? Even if I'm not sharing, like uh, I don't know. Hello. Can I share my screen? So I have a PowerPoint that I've actually prepared here that I want to use to talk about uh, my session today. So. But I don't think I can do that from here. So um, I'm trying to see what is possible because um, what I'm going to be discussing is not just something I can just talk about I think it's something that we all need to see, and that way we will be able to appreciate the depth uh, of the work, and we'll also be able to appreciate uh, the impact that um, art actually have when it comes I, to- Can you send to me? I, can actually, I was actually seeing your screen when yes. you were trying to share, but I was not seeing the actual document, just seeing your whole screen when you tried okay. to share. Yes, so the, it's a PowerPoint. So yeah, can you can share. send it to me by what's no, you can. Okay, I think you I can. can. Okay, all I right. I was seeing so, your screen, so it's for you to pick, just I'll bring it up. Okay, Try so let again. me see. Let me see. Share screen. So um do I share application window? Oh yes. Okay, I've seen it. Oh, okay, now but yeah. it's not enabled. It's not enabled. So I'm trying to share now, it's not enabled here. Uh, but I saw it before. Appli appli I don't application know. window here. So here, I'm trying to share now. It's not enabled. I'm actually seeing oh, my okay. screen here now. You know Open. what? Just send me while you're doing a, a, a beginning talk. Just send me quickly. Send me through WhatsApp. I will do it. No, I'm I'm sending it to you as an email now, so that that way you just see it. Is that okay? Uh, Is that okay. good? All right. Excellent. Okay. All right. Yeah. Um. All right, sorry for the going forth and back on this. 
Um, I'll still be able to meet up with time. But I just want to make sure that people get uh, the best from this. Okay. All right. All right. Almost a few minutes time, please. Sorry, guys. Okay. Okay. So he sent it to you now through Google Drive. Okay. So I'll, I'll get it. it. Yes. So over time, okay, I'm going to I'm just going to continue talking until she's able to receive it and also be able to help me to share from my own side. So over time, as an artist, I have worked uh, in development space and working with different group group of persons. I work with um, persons living with chronic illness, like sickle cell anemia. I also work with those who are. Uh, those who are living with cancer in Nigeria, and not just in Nigeria, also in the United States. I work with those who are living with uh, dementia and other, um, I work with those who are living with Alzheimer's disease and, and other form of dementia or neurological disability or impairment. I also work with prison inmates. I work with girls in correctional centers or correctional homes. I work with, um, I mean, young adults uh, with mental health problems. So my work is quite diverse as an artist and working with trying to explore uh, the role of creativity and improving the quality of life with people with different medical conditions, with different, you know, um, health challenges as it were. So over time, my work has really, you know, given me the opportunity to be able to travel around the world, to be able to, you know, impact more people and impact more population. One of the things that I think that uh, art does to people is that, I mean, you uh, being part of artistic process gives you leverage to be able to find joy, to find hope and to find happiness in the midst of depression, in the midst of anxiety, in the midst of social isolation. For instance, uh, some of the people that we work with at the Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria, one of the things I realized about people who are uh, living with sickle cell uh, disorder is the issue of stigma, right? So how, how can we help people who are living with sickle cell anemia deal with stigma, the issue of stigma, the issue of social withdrawal, the issue of social isolation, because sometimes they feel like uh, they are different from other people and there's sometimes some of them just want to keep to themselves. They're actually in their own shell. Over time, facilitating art in medicine program uh, with um, Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria has really opened door for other people, about person living with sickle cell in Nigeria to be able to find connection, to be able to socialize, to be able to find joy, to be able to relate with any other person, regardless of what their, what their genotype is. So I think that um, healing comes through connections and I think um, art actually provide that, and that is evident in the program that we actually do through the Tender Art Nigeria initiatives, through Art and Medicine Project in Nigeria, and through Art and Medicine Fellowship Program too. Not just that alone. I mean, think about this. Um, every opportunity to visit an art gallery or visit uh, an, uh, a museum um, is also part of the process that contributes to our wellness and to our healing too. Art is not just what you just experience, maybe through personal experience by drawing. It's also probably an encounter with somebody else's work. It could be a painting, it could be a drawing, it could be a sculpture, it could be assemblage, it could be photography, it could be installation, it could be music, it could be, art, it could be video art. So, you know, creativity is quite diverse. And then, so being able to encounter art it's like you witnessing a sunrise, you know, after, I mean, a long night and you wake up and you were able to see the sunlight. So there's so much joy that art brings into our lives as individuals, individual, and there's so much joy and happiness that art brings into community. I mean, for instance, I mean, look at what is happening with the coronavirus or the pandemic. Um, people couldn't actually go to theater, people can, couldn't go to galleries, they couldn't go to museums. And before you know it, 
the virtual space like this actually became a necessity. Technology more than ever before became a necessity for facilitating art-based interventions. And then so many people, you realize that music concerts were being actually hosted online so that people who are actually in the moment we are all in now can actually see experience music, even though the concert all are not accessible, yet technology provides us that leverage to be able to see experience music to see to be still, to see be able to experience art whether it's virtual art uh, engagement so all of these are actually evident in all of the things that we have seen over time so um i realized okay when i was in the us uh because i'm now in nigeria now so when i was in the us i did uh, quite a number of program i i facilitated a virtual art program for seniors that are living with dementia, those who are living with, I mean, I know some of us probably do not really understand the concept of dementia. Dementia actually has to do with memory loss. People who have cognitive impairment, people who have their, you know, cognitive uh, um, part actually malfunctioning in one way or the other. So I was able to facilitate creative opportunity or co creative opportunities for them by engaging Zoom, by leveraging technology. To ensure that I mean they are not left behind, to ensure that they are still connected, to ensure that they are still benefiting from the healing power of the art. We are ready. You're ready now. Yes. Excellent. So will I be able will I be able to will I be able to control it from, from here or you'll be able to do it from your side? I and mean, I mean this slide because I'll of time. It. Yes, I'll do it. Excellent. So I, definitely I will see it, right? So yes. yeah. I think so. so this is me this is me uh uh on a visit to seattle washington state uh in the united states and uh, here i had a opportunity opportunity of visiting this particular glass art museum in seattle if you have, if you have opportunity of traveling and you're in the u.s and you are uh, you are opportunity to go to seattle i will recommend that you go to the glass art museum i mean look at this space look at Look at the lights. No, just let me. I'm just trying to explain from that side, ma'am. So look at the light. Look at the colors. Look at the look at everything in that space. Imagine you. I mean, somebody that is sick walking into this hall with the light, with the color, with the art. That actually can be, you know, a strong element in the recovery process of. I mean, a patient or somebody who's actually having a hard time or having mental health problem or somebody who's actually experiencing stress or anxiety, right? So visiting museums and visiting studios or visiting art galleries actually play a very strong and vital role uh, in our well-being, in our healing process. So for me, yeah. So if... I mean, at any time at all, you have not really had opportunity of visiting galleries in any way. I mean, there are several galleries, there are several art exhibitions in Lagos or anywhere in Nigeria or around the world. I would probably recommend that you try to visit so that you can really explore uh, the healing power of the art and how that can really help you and uh, your journey in life as an individual. You can please go to the next slide, ma'am. So this, uh, this is me here in 2014. Uh, here at the Pediatric Oncology at Lagos University Teaching Hospital facilitating ads for these kids that actually have leukemia. So this was 2014. You can see I was so skinny in that place. And um, I mean, you know, this art actually provide opportunity for these kids who are actually on sick bed to be able to leave their sick bed. From sick bed, they came into the... Uh, uh, to this particular space and we provided materials for them to be able to express themselves, to be able to socialize. I mean, look at their faces, look at their smiles. And I want to say that not many of these kids actually make it out alive from this particular pediatric oncology in Lut. I know a few of, a few of them that actually, that actually died uh, from having leukemia. But what is important is the journey, the process of engaging them in art. So if you really want to look at the, the effective uh, power of the art when it comes to healing is not in the product it's in the process the healing is not in the finished product it's in the process the engagement the connection the collaboration the creative the creating the socializing the laughter the smile that is where the healing lies not the finished work and you can see even here they are not even done painting and look at the joy the radiance on their faces 
And that is what art can do when you start engaging in creative practice, like painting, like singing, like music. You can even do karaoke. I mean, just singing, just dancing by yourself, regardless of who is looking and who is not looking at you. All of these things can really boost your, your, immune, your immune system and can really help you in your journey uh, as a person. Next slide, please. So this is uh, one of the art programs we did at the Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria uh, through the uh, support of the, uh, the U.S. mission to Nigeria. Uh, here we had uh, persons, uh, children, uh, adolescents, uh, young adults who actually have sickle cell anemia, who are part of our program, been involved in creating uh, you know, works of art. Actually, now that if you visit the sickle cell center today, you'll get to see this installation work. And interestingly, uh, as I told you, also actually participated in this experience. Please, next slide, please. I told you, look at her here. Look at her face. Look at the art. Look at the light. Look at the painting. Look at what art can actually do. And that is one of the things that art brings to us. Bring to art brings healing to our space. Art brings joy to us. Art actually changes our environment and elevates our mood. It elevates individuals' mood, it changes the way they think, it distracts their mind, it takes up their mind from the pain they are experiencing, whether in the moment or where they are in life, and art changes uh, their perception about their pain, it allows them to focus on the moment and enjoy the moment. I mean, look at what happened recently, even with, with the NSAS saga, with all of the things that happened, the trauma that came out of that, not many people could actually sleep. So imagine the role that music play when it comes to meditation that allow people to really be able to sleep. So mindfulness and music, painting and all of all other forms of art really help to relax our nerves, helps us to really, I know, help, help, help us to manage our stress level and actually help us to have strong and a great quality of life. Next slide, please. This is one of the sessions I had with um, older adults and seniors who actually are living with Alzheimer's disease or memory loss in Nigeria. Um, one of the things that art actually does is really help to improve the cognitive functions in, in older adults and people who actually have you know, memory loss. And that, that's one of the things we can see in this picture. Next slide, please. Um, this is actually uh, a visit from the US uh, mission in Nigeria to one of our art programs at Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria, just showing them the impact and the output of some of the programs we've been doing. Next slide, please. Uh, this one of the sessions I actually had uh, in the community that has so much gun violence and teenage pregnancy in South Africa, in Westbury. So you can see them creating works of art. Some of these girls or young girls are becoming teenage mothers. Some of them are actually HIV uh, patients. And uh, some of them are today um, through the arts uh, that I facilitated in that particular session with them about a few years ago. Actually, I've been able to find joy and find hope and find purpose and drive to live a meaningful life. Next slide, please. Uh, this is one of the sessions I had with um, Down Syndrome Foundation Nigeria, uh, where an organization came to collaborate with them, where I actually Facilitate this, facilitated this engagement. So actually they were filmmakers and they were filming a documentary, the process and actually my project engaging with persons with dis living with disabilities in Nigeria. So I work with different groups, like I said before, I work with persons living with disabilities, including those who are living with autism, Down syndrome, cerebral palsy, and other neurological disabilities, including with children uh, at mental health service centers in Nigeria. Next slide, please. So one of the things that we do is bedside music in our Arte Medicine Fellowship and Arte Medicine Project. And this is the Pediatric Oncology Award uh, right here at the Lagos University Teaching Hospital. And today, just this, just this engagement gave birth to our annual gift of music that we do every year. So every year we facilitate gift of music where we take orchestra into the hospital space to perform for patients. And uh, that really helped. So the patient, even though Actually, I mean, this particular girl, even though she was on a sick bed, she was singing while the violinist was performing to her song. And that is what actually brings healing. Rather than just being in the sick bed, actually really helped to elevate 
and uplift the spirit of person who actually have one sickness or the other. Next slide, please. So um, over time, I work with a group of artists in Nigeria where we create mirror, mirrors. So we are not just creating a painting uh, just with patients. We also beautify hospital spaces and hospital walls. And one of the works we did, this particular work is at the Federal Neuros Neuropsychiatric Hospital titled Wings for Mental Health. So these, some of these uh, people here today, they actually are members of our network in Art and Medicine Fellowship Program in Nigeria. Next slide, please. And uh, this is another wall at the new Neonata uh, Ward at the Lagos University Station Hospital. If you go to Neonata Ward D1, in Lut, you will find this big butterfly that we painted on this wall for mothers who actually are going through mental health stress or mental health challenges because the, because of the fact that probably they give birth to pretend babies. So this particular word is for, I mean, pretend babies. So while the mothers are waiting for their babies under the light, trying to pray that the, the children will survive, what we did is to bring light. We brought light by creating large mirrors so, so that the parents uh, can actually, the mothers, can focus on the beauty and pray, hopefully, that their children will survive and will become living babies. Next slide, please. So through, art, through our art program, we help to improve maternal mental health in Nigeria. So this is the mirrors I, talk, I told us about. So if you go to the Federal New York Psychiatric Hospital, the drug ward unit, you will find these large, super large mirrors that were painted on a very big wall. And in doing this, we didn't paint this wall alone. Patient also, I'm talking about older adults and young adults who actually who actually have depression, who have one, who have mental health problem, or the other. So they are actually they were part of the process of creating this mirror that we did at the Federal New Psychiatric Hospital. So art really helped to improve the mental health of persons. And um, this is one of the paintings I did. So this painting, I know many of us know Robin Williams. So this is the uh, the famous Robin Williams, um, the popular American uh, a comedian a actor that died. People thought, oh, he committed suicide. Of course, he committed suicide, but he was depressed. Now, what was the cause of the depression? Actually, uh, uh, according to a report, uh, Robin Williams actually had Lewy body dementia. You may want to write that down. Check out what actually happened to Robin Williams. He had Lewy body dementia so robin williams as a super and a great man and a great actor and a fantastic comedian actually had memory loss he was losing his lines he couldn't remember his lines and there's somebody who, who i mean someone like himself who's a genius who can actually not, no longer function the way he used to function was frustrated because of the sickness was frustrated because of the disease and in the long run it, was, it actually committed suicide but what i did through my painting here because so the woman standing beside this painting is the wife of robin williams her name is susan schneider williams so i had the privilege of meeting her when i was in the united states and actually she got this painting so this painting is uh right at robin williams our home now so what i did was not to focus on what killed um, how Robin Williams died and focus on his personality. A great guy, a guy that brought joy to veterans in the, in the United States, a guy that, that loved sharing so much joy and happiness. And then it is very important because art really even shifts our perspectives as professionals. It takes off our eyes from looking at individuals as patients, rather as persons. Before, because before anybody become a, a, a sickler or a patient, they are person, they are person with potentials, they are person with resources. And if we are able to focus on what people or who they are or who they used to be, it can really help to change the narratives around the role of art and wellness and well-being. Next slide, please. So um, through my art program, I have uh, mentors, around, mentors around the world. And here is one of my mentors in the United States. His name is Professor Jordan Potash. Uh, she's a professor in art therapy. And you can see origami, cream birds behind him and installation work. And this was a picture I had with him uh, in Alexandra in the United States in 2015. Next slide, please. Um, okay, so um, this is an image of uh, Oak. 
uh, with um, a, a patient at the pediatric oncology at Lagos University Teaching Hospital. So one of the things that we do is we create mirrors, like superheroes mirrors on the wall to empower our children that have actually have, I mean, like maybe a, a sickle cell anemia or those that have cancer to see how, to see themselves as heroes. They are not victims. Rather, they are victors. They are, they are heroes because they are warriors. They are trying to fight cancer. No many of them, like I said, will make it. However, we've seen how uh, creating mirrors of superhero characters really elevate and give courage um, to sick children in pediatric oncology in Nigeria. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So the previous work is you that I showed you and this one were works that actually facilitated during this COVID-19 uh, with um, different people from around the world. Next slide, please. Uh, these are children I work with uh, who are actually victims and survivors of Boko Haram insurgency in Northeast Nigeria. So I work with survivors of terror attack in Northeast Nigeria, and this is just one of the examples that I have. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is the mental health service center uh, in Nigeria where we actually created a mirror uh, for children that have mental health problem in Nigeria. Next slide, please. And this is one of the mirrors we did at Freedom New Psychiatric Hospital. And the headset, music for mental health. Next slide, please. Uh, this is one of the paintings we did at the bone marrow transplant unit uh, by the Sukhusei Foundation in partnership with Lagos University Station Hospital. So if you go to the a new pediatric uh, building that is built uh, uh, in, in Luth, the topmost floor, you'll find this, you find these uh, these paintings there. We painted it. We we're commissioned to make these mirrors for this for that particular bone marrow transplant unit. Next slide, please. So these are superheroes character. If you go to, to the um the pediatric oncology in Luth, you get to see this that were painted for children that have cancer. Next slide, please. Our our um fellows facilitating our session for children in pediatric oncology, also in pediatric ward in Luth. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Uh, so this is one of the sessions that we did uh, with young people and youth that have mental problems. She, she painted this one. You see admiring her painting. And that's what art can actually do for people that have mental problems, can really help them to reconnect with their inner self. Next slide, please. And uh, this, some of the, uh, all of these guys you're seeing, they are actually medical students now that are involved in our program in facilitating art-based intervention for people with health conditions and health, care, uh, health problems in Nigeria. Next slide, please. And uh, so we use VR, VR uh, technology in providing healing and awareness for people uh, in our program in Nigeria. So by using VR. Uh, for painting process to create digital art. And this one of the sessions we had at the Sickle Cell Foundation Nigeria. This uh, is this one of the installation work we actually did with person who live on sickle cell. Um, this one of the sessions we did with children also living with uh, chronic illness like cancer. You see the joy in their face, the music, and the art. Next slide, please. And uh, so presently, I lead the largest art in net network on the continent of Africa with over 300 members. And uh, presently now we are running now a program in the region of Africa uh, with about 200 membership. And uh, this Art Medicine Fellowship Program is a uh, the fellowship program for professionals and students, uh, whether you are an artist, you are a mental health advocate, you are a awareness coach, a uh, lot of people who are actually part of our program. And our fellows have opportunity of going for international programs like um, summer intensive program on art awareness and art in medicine and art in health program. And as, uh, in 2018, I had the opportunity of, I mean, taking about seven of our fellows of the United States to participate participate in Art and Awareness, I mean, um, summit in the United States. So, for more about our program, Art and Medicine Project, and Art and Medicine Fellowship, you can please visit uh, www.artandmedicinefellowship.org and uh, continue to experience uh, the kind of joy and the creativity we bring to the world to collaborative work. Thank you so much, Kule. Thank you. Um, it's really an extensive work. Um, yeah, I remember when I saw the Robin Williams picture, it, it, it spoke a lot, even the flower in his mouth. I, to me, I, it, it just signified that sometimes you can be under the, in the, on the you can be 
depressed, but you may not be able to speak about it. And people will not see what they are going through because he was seen as, oh, this is a man who does comedy. Why would he be all depressed? Joyous, you all know? Happy, yes. All yes, happy. exactly. Don't that, don't so you never really know. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So you never really know what somebody is going to until they express themselves. Maybe if he had that opportunity to express himself through paintings, people could understand what he was going through. Uh, because sometimes it's always difficult for people to talk about it. But when you paint about it, people be looking, okay, why were you feeling this way? Why, why, why did you write paint it like this? Or like you have a journal, like what's talking about for the past few days, having a journal, you write your, your expressions, how you feel and everything. And then you have, people will understand you better rather than actually vocalizing it. So if we have any questions for Kunle, um, one thing I want to ask um, in terms of, because people always say, ah, ah she is just painting, she is just music. How can one use it practically? I may not be able to go to um, an art team, a medicine um, project or whatever program, but in my own house, in my own small space, how can I use art to help me in days that I'm down, days I'm lying in bed? Because we're talking about periods where you're, you're, you're sick, uh, whether it's you have sickle cell or any other condition, you just can't do anything and you're frustrated. But you can use art to help you go through that period. So what are the practical steps one can use? So one of the things I think we can do is that um, art is not just drawing or painting. I have to say that. So art is not drawing or painting. So you're like, oh, mm. I, don't have, I don't have crayons. I don't have watercolor. No, 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 no. Art, art is around us. Mm. I'll give you one, one example. Um, some of us have smartphones. You can go on YouTube and play meditation music. So art has gone beyond the traditional ways of facilitating engagement. There's so much resources that you can actually benefit from through technology. Go online. If you go online, you can play music. For, so, for someone like myself, sometimes I play music to sleep. Music allows mm. me to sleep. So that I do that a lot. In fact, since I came back even from the US, and then all of the things happening in Nigeria, that is giving me sleepless nights. You know what I do? I play music, and then I sleep like a baby. And that is, music is an element of art. So whatever you think works for you best, that's one practical example by exploring music online, whether it's on Spotify or YouTube, that is one too. You can actually buy art materials as basic yeah. as, as crayon. It could be mm -hmm. wax crayon, color pencil, watercolor. And let me say this, like I said while I was speaking, your healing is not in the finished product. So many, many at times you're like, oh, my artwork is so you poor. Like, I tell that. You, I tell you like, oh, <laughs> this work is so bad. It's ugly. No. The question is, why did you even paint in the first place? The process is more important than the finished product when it comes to art. So whatever the outcome of the painting or the drawing is, the question is, how, how were you feeling when you were painting? Were you experiencing freedom, the freedom of expression? Were you experiencing joy? Were you really free with yourself? Were you relaxed? So those are the things you should look out for, as opposed to now, now becoming judgmental about the film product, what you created. You start judging yourself, and that sends you back into depression. Because by being critical on yourself and judging yourself, really put you in a bad place. It's not really good for your mental health. It lowers your self-esteem. I mean, you, you have a mental health problem or mental health condition, and now you're judging your work already. You don't, you don't do that. Just enjoy the journey. Enjoy the process. So that is another way of just being practically, you know, a practical um, step in actually doing like a self, uh, do it DIY, do it yourself at engagement. And also, there are not there are not paid by numbers. You actually order yes. for paid by numbers. So even if you are not an artist, I can't draw. So there, are, I mean, I mean. Things have been simplified in a way that nobody can say, I can't do something. Everybody can do mm. something. I said you are lazy. <laughs> I said you are lazy. That's when you can't do anything. Now, at, at, I mean, paintings, now people paint by numbers. You have something like a map, and it, it tells you what color to put where. And at the end of the day, you realize that you are able to create something, and there's so much joy that that actually, actually that art brings to you. So that's, I mean, these are just practical steps of doing one, with, one thing or you. And if you think you are really depressed, I should go to art galleries. I mentioned that. Oh, you don't have to yeah. sit all alone by yourself in the house. 
left alone. I mean, that's where the thought of suicide come in. Depression, social isolation. You can go to the gallery and socialize. Interact with works of, works of art. Go to Nikkei Art Gallery at Lekki. And look at the paintings. Art speaks to us. Art communicates to us. So, and that's why, I mean, in my room, there's a very big painting in front of me here. So, for me, that's that does it. How do you guys come up yeah, with so this kind of... <laughs> <laughs> This kind of exciting painting. <laughs> So, um, so one of the things we do basically is I, I cite I cited an example of the mirrors that we did at Federal New Psychiatric Hospital. So uh, we were thinking of things that can really uplift the spirit and the mood of people, and then we start exploring wings, and then we also told uh, the patient actually who are young adults and to think of things and elements that we can incorporate into. Uh, um, the mirrors. So um, the mirrors are actually uh, collaboration work between professional artists and patients in mental health facilities in Nigeria, and also even patients probably uh, uh, in government hospitals. So and, and so those collaborations come with maybe sketching, maybe patients actually sketch something. I was like, wow, we can incorporate this into the design that we are working. And at the end of the day, it becomes a collective win. So healing is a collective win because it's not just about one person saying, oh, I'm the doctor. <laughs> no, so you facilitating a therapeutic program, actually therapeutic for you because it's a joy, the person who is benefiting from your program experience and that joy is transmitted back to you. So it's a way traffic for you. Yes, basically, that's it. Thank you so much. So there, are there any other questions? Okay, I thought I saw our, our, our next guest, but it seems to be have popped up, maybe network. Um, but we'll have one more chance for questions. Um, you know, I, I think basically when people see art like that, and that's what's my impression in the oh wow, this art is so beautiful. That how can I do it? I, I I'm not an artist, so they're like, okay, how can I pay something fantastic? But I, I I tell you, art is a process. You can start like your you're painting what seems like you're painting nonsense. Well, what is nonsense to you, but it can be something wonderful to another person, you know, and that's what I learned about art. So you just start, begin, and then by the time you, there are even trainings on YouTube on how to paint, how to do so many things. A lot of stuff I did, um, I got from, um, from YouTube on how to paint. So, and there are free stuff for you to see the processes and you can be able to achieve it that way. Just start small, start with something, a paper, get regular paint, if it's watercolor or anything, there are art shops around um, and um, just start. That's the thing, don't rationalize or whether it's going to be great or good or whatever, just start and that's the most important thing. So thank you so much, Kunle. Thank you for all you do. Um, and we'll, we'll continue doing stuff together, you know, uh, because I really see the impact of art in our mental health and an emotional state. So thank you and have a lovely Sunday. Thank you so much, man. Thank you for hosting me. And thank you, everyone. Have a good one. Have a great week ahead. And happy new month. <laughs> yes. <laughs> thank you. All right, guys. Our next guest is waiting. And um, so he's going to be on right now. I just want to do his bio. Uh, so don't go anywhere because this is going to be very, very interesting. I know a lot of us suffer from burnout, overwhelm, especially in the workplace, they power work on you or you're running your own business and you have so much work, you tend to feel overwhelmed. This is for you. Sam or Bafemi is an unconventional thinker. He likens himself to an octopus whose primary preoccupation is to solve problems and in fact, where possible, help people avoid them. He's a trained computer scientist turned behavioral change therapist and small business developer. He is a UK certified life coach trained in positive psychiatry from Sydney University, Australia, and the first Nigerian anger management therapist from Century Anger Management USA. He's a master NLP practitioner and an emotional intelligence expert. He is the president of Sam Obafemi Behavioral Change Academy and also the lead operations strategist of a business innovation platform called Business Study Group. He is also the creator of Diary of a Coach, an online community where he shares empowering thoughts about life. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Sam Obafemi to the Positive and Wellness Summit 
as he speaks on avoiding burnout, how corporate and employee wellness can boost productivity. Okay, welcome, CS. I, I don't seem to be able to, okay, I think he has frozen. Coach Sam, can you hear me? I think you've frozen. Let me take a break, I'll be back. Here are the things to do to avoid getting or spreading the coronavirus. Always wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Carry with you and use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer at all times. Avoid touching your face unnecessarily. When you cough or sneeze, do so in a bent elbow and not in your hands. If you cough or sneeze on a tissue, dispose immediately. Endeavor to wear a face mask when you go out. Dispose of the face mask properly after use. Should you feel unwell and show symptoms, call the NCDC and follow their instructions. Stay safe. Maintain social distance. Fidelity cares about you. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Thank you. Sorry about the network issues. Uh, I know some of you are back and um, we'll start now. Hey, CS. <laughs> network <you>. issues. <laughs> we are there. We are fine. We are fine. We are fine. We are fine. <laughs> it's been a great you, man. Good to see you. Good to see you too. Good guys, don't leave. This is going to be a very interesting period of session, so don't leave. I know we had a break, uh, so I know all of you are worrying about data, but this is going to impact your life. So stay on. I'll hand over the session to Coach Sam as he takes us through morning out. <laughs> all right, you. it's such an honor to be here. I hope. I can be heard. Please let me know if you can hear me. I'm so happy to be here this evening. Please let me know if you can hear me. I'll be very glad to know. How are you today? Who is here? Let me first confirm that you can hear me so I can continue. Yeah. I'm looking at the chat room, trying to be sure. Fantastic. I can, can you hear me? Okay, perfect. So, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am very glad to be here. My name is Sam Obafemi. I lead a team at Sopka. Sopka is an organization where we help everyone within the limits of our capacity, one mind at a time, providing emotional and mental support for you so that you can stand and you know you can live a good life i hope it's been a beautiful weekend for you so far i can see many names in the chat room from where i'm looking at olabisi olukotun mayo waogunkomi zaid mohammed suleiman adenika adediron gina clinton olamide ojubele thanks guys for joining 
And I hope it's been a beautiful conference since day one. I want to thank Sami and Antito in my big sis for being very generous, providing us a free program where we can come and learn and protect ourselves for the future. So let's roll. My topic today is how to prevent burnout. And it revolves around several, uh, several things. It talks about stress. It talks about mental health. It talks about replenishment and you know, rejuvenating yourself. And I'm hoping that I can help you today. But let me first ask, right now, right now, on a scale of 1 to 10, how, how refreshed are you in your body? I want you to check yourself. So let's do something very quickly. Please sit straight. Do what I do and hear what I say. Sit straight and check yourself. Like feel yourself from the crown of your head. Scan yourself from the crown of your head down to the sole of your feet. And ask yourself, how refreshed am I? Then I wanted to answer in the chat room. On a scale of 1 to 10, how refreshed are you? Where 10 means you are good to go, you are fully energized. And one is you are really out and out, you are flat out energy. So answer that question. On a scale of one to 10, how rejuvenated are you? Where 10 is fully refreshed, good to go, and one means you really need help with this topic. Let me get your answers in the chat room. I'll be looking at the chat area. How refreshed are you on a scale of one to 10? Talk to me. How refreshed are you on a scale of 1 to 10? How refreshed are you on a scale of 1 to 10? 10, wow, I love that. Zaid says 10. Fantastic. Fantastic. Who else? 8, 5 for Gina Clinton. Nice. Uh, Olabisi says 8. Okay. 8 for Mayowa. Fantastic. Good, 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 good. Okay, so my next question now is, Adenike says six. Okay, my next question. My next question is, when was the last time you were less than five? When was the last time, if you checked, that you were less than five? When was the last time you checked? The last time you checked, when were you less than five? Was it three months ago or one year ago or long time ago? You know, let me know. When was the last time you felt less than five in terms of your being ref refreshed. Let me know. When was the last time you felt less than five? Talk to me. When was the last time you felt less than five? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I want to see. When was the last time? Yeah, anyone? I'll count down from three, then I'll continue. Three, two, and one. Okay, three months ago. Wow, Olabisi says five years ago. That must be very, you've been a very strong person. Fantastic. Zaid says three months ago. I can, I can almost imagine. Wow. Okay, so my people, we're talking about burnout. Burnout is a part and parcel of our lives. I didn't need cases two months ago. I want to let you know, and I want you to write the following things down. It is okay to not be okay. It's okay to not be okay. It's okay to burn out. It's okay to be weary. It's okay to be tired. It's okay to just not feel anything. It's okay to feel out of sync, sync, S-Y-N-C, sync. It's okay to feel out of line. It's okay to, be, to feel out of congruence. It's okay to not be okay. That we need to set fundamentally. Once you understand that it's okay for you to not be okay once in a while, then you won't beat yourself up for wearing out. It's very key for us to take note of that. What does it mean to burn out? To so burn out is just like I have said, you know, going out of feeling, going out of enthusiasm, going out of motivation, going out of congruence, 
going out of alignment. That is what it means to burn out. So examples of burning out is, let me give you an typical example. I love to read a lot of books. I read a lot of books, especially business books. But in the last two weeks, I've not been able to pick a business book to read. I have three books I'm reading concurrently right now. I'm reading Steve Jobs' books, book. I'm reading a book about Osama bin Laden. And I'm reading a book about branding. These three books were the books I was reading in parallel. But in the last two weeks, I'm looking at the books like this, like, yeah, yeah, I see you guys. But I'm not picking it up. I'm just burnt out. I'm, since the NSAS crisis, I've not been able to zero into reading. I've been doing a lot of recalibration and support for people and different groups. So I've been held up and I've not had the motivation to read the books I've been reading. That's been burnt out. So to burn out is to go out of sync, out of enthusiasm, out of motivation, out of congruence with what you normally love to do. So I want to ask you a question. Now, before I ask that question, I want to say one more thing. It is possible to burn out in something and not burn out in another thing at the same time. It is possible to burn out in something and not burn out in another thing at the same time. It's possible to burn out in everything at the same time. It's possible to burn out in just one thing or a few things at the same time. It, we're all at different levels and thresholds of this experience. So I want to ask this question. In what areas of your life today do you feel you are burning out, even though you are motivated in other areas? In what part of your life today do you feel you are burning out, even though you are motivated in other areas? Can I see? Tell me, in what part of your life today do you feel you are burning out, even though you are motivated in some other areas? Let me hear you. Tell me. In what areas today do you feel you are burning out, even though you feel inspired in some other areas? Let me know. Talk to me. Yeah. In what area of your life do you feel you are burning out, even if you feel motivated in other areas? Do you feel burnt out eating the food you eat, you cook? Do you feel burnt out going to work? Do you feel burnt out connecting with your significant lover? Do you feel burnt out reading like I am? Do you feel burnt out having social gatherings like some people? For me, Olufemi says, I'm, I feel burnt out in my health. Wow, I can imagine. Ajimotokon says, my health and chores. I can imagine. Who else? Gina says, studying. I can imagine. Fantastic. Good. Who else? I'll take two more before we continue. Before we continue, before we continue, who else? Who else? Yeah? Who else? Who else? Zaid says studying. Wow. Interesting. I'll take one more. One more. Uh, Adenike says in reading and writing. Joy James says in relationships. He feels burnt out in relationships. Gina says going to work, connecting with people and church. Wow. These are powerful things. Now, let me quickly share with us. <clears throat> Excuse me, why we burn out? 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 Now, I'm going to read a few reasons why we burn out. Number one reason why we burn out is because we feel guilty taking a break. Number one reason why people burn out is guilt of taking a break. Number one reason why people burn out is guilt of taking a break. In the Nigerian society, we have been stereotyped to think it is wrong to take a break. We have been stereotyped to think it is wrong to take a break. Sometimes people, we have been made to feel that when you are taking a break from something you love doing, that you are doing something wrong. I have a friend, she loves to cook, always likes cooking. In fact, she always finds it pleasurable when we visit her house and she cooks for us. Then at a period, she said, you know what guys, I want you guys to bring me food. She was burnt out. She felt like cooking was stressing her at that particular time. And she was asking us to buy, so she would say, please order food for me today. I want to eat um, prawns and this, I want to eat this and that. 
And because we were already conversant with the fact that she loves to cook, we didn't have any challenges supporting her with providing or supplying her whatever she wanted to eat. That was our own way of reciprocating. So she felt burnt out, you know, taking that break. But guess what? Because she took that break and, you know, she didn't cook for a while and some of us friends were supporting and sending food. Some of other friends were saying, how can you say you don't like to, you, you feel burnt out cooking? Are you not a woman? Not be a woman you be. How can the woman say she's tired of cooking? If you are married, are you going to tell your husband you're tired of cooking? That is our society for you. The stereotype that you should not take a break from what you love. If I ask some of you, when was the last time you went on leave from work? You will say leave. I don't need leave. Oh. Let them even give me the leave allowance. I don't want to go on leave. I want to be working. Let them give me the money. But at the end of the day, your performance at work will drop. You will become less productive. You become less effective. You become less efficient. Guess what has happened? Burnout. But why? Because you refused to take a break. When you try to take a break, start feeling guilty that you know what? I'm not supposed to go on break now. Other people are working. The same thing with relationships. I found that one of the biggest relationship issues is that we're always in our faces. Every day we're together. Every day we're together. Every day we're together. No, it's not done that way. Even marital couples take time off. I have friends who travel once in a while alone without their spouses. They just need to recalibrate and realign. So you must practice taking time off once in a while. I want you to write what you heard me say. Practice taking time off once in a while. So number one reason for burning off or burning out is the guilt of not taking a break. And the solution to that is practice taking time off once in a while. Let me know if you got that before I continue. Did you get that point? Yes or no? Did you get that point? Yes or no? Did you get that point? Yes or no? I'd like to see the engagement. Hopefully you can answer in time. So we can save some minutes. I have some just a few minutes to go. Anyone? Fantastic. So that was number one. Number one is the guilt of taking a break. And the solution is practice taking some time off. Number two reasons why we burn out. Number two reason why we burn out is improper time management. Improper time. Sorry, let me put it this way. Improper time and energy management. Improper time and energy management. Improper time and energy management is number two reason why we burn out. Improper time and energy management is the number two reason why we burn out. In other words, lack of organization. Some of us are very disorganized. Very disorganized. We are very disorganized. So it, it makes us burn out. It makes us burn out. When you are disorganized, you are the kind that does not plan your day. You don't plan your movement. You don't plan your shadows. You don't plan your activities. You don't plan your itineraries. You don't plan the things you do. And suddenly you feel overwhelmed. So lack of organization is the number two reason why people burn out. Improper time and energy management. Some of you live in Lagos. And those that live in Lagos, I don't envy you at all. You have to wake up very early. You have to go into the traffic. You have to con condone a lot of noise. You have to walk briskly. You have to watch your back. You have to protect yourself. You have to walk long hours. You have to close late. You have to return home late. You barely eat good food. You don't get fresh food. You cannot afford to be disorganized in Lagos. You cannot afford to not be an organized person. You cannot afford to not manage your time. You cannot afford to not manage your energy. What is time and energy management? Time management is judicious use of your hours and your minutes and your seconds. Judicious use of your hours and your minutes and your seconds. A typical example. 
when you are waiting in a queue, can you use that time to rest your brain? Some of the things many of us have become conversant to is our phones. We're so conversant with our phones. So when we are waiting in a queue, let's say you're in a banking hall, you're waiting to get to the counter. Let's say you are in a BRT queue. Let's say you are, you know, any queue. Instead of you to rest your eyes and rest your brain and just restore some energy, you are busy binging on social media. Binging on social media, it wears you out. That's, an, that's not a good time management skill. Some of you resume, you wake up very early. In the middle of the day, instead of you to find 15 minutes where you can just rest your head, you may not sleep, but just rest your head, close your eyes, and try to expel thoughts and catch a nap, a power nap. You will not do it. That's when you're Facebooking. That's when you're tweeting. That's when you're ig -ing. That's not good time management. Some of you, you get home very late, and instead of, because you know you will get home late, you should have sorted your dinner on the way. Some of you need to learn to have your meals on the go, or practice taking meals early evenings and have salads or some healthy food when you get home late and retire on time. Time management helps you avoid burnout. Energy management simply says, when you feel the burst of energy, get things done. When you feel slow, rest. When you feel in the mood, get things done. When you feel out of mood, rest. But some of us, whether you are in the mood, you are not in the mood, you want to be walking, 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 doing, 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 doing. You are falling asleep, you are closing your eyes, you are putting water on your eyes, you are saying, no, 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 I can't sleep now, I can't sleep now. Some of you put, a leg, you put your legs in, in a bucket of water and say, no, I cannot sleep now, I cannot sleep now. Don't do that to yourself. You are killing yourself. You are burning out. And that is very, very wrong. So, practice proper time and energy management when you feel the burst of energy get things done when you feel that you are slow rest it's very very important let your body clock guide you let your body clock guide you what is body clock your body tells you what to do let me tell you something. This session I'm having is the first work I'm doing today. I have been sleeping all day. I think I finally woke up fully around 2 o'clock this afternoon. I left my bed, came to my couch in the sitting room, removed all the cities, put on the AC, cuddled in the couch, slept, woke up, slept, woke up, slept. I made sure I did not leave the couch. I kept drifting off and on and off and on. I needed to expel a lot of sleep that has been trapped in my system. So this is the first work I'm doing today. After this, I have a session by five o'clock and I'm done for the day. I follow my body clock. When my body is sleepy, I sleep. When my body is excited, I follow the drift. So make sure, I did not go to church, fool me, Olu Femi, come and beat me in my house. So that is how I do it. Follow your body clock. Very, very important. Very, very important. Number three reason why we burn out. So number one was we said, you know, the feeling the guilt. I can feel it in your voice. <laughs> feeling the guilt of taking a break was number one reason. Number two was improper time and energy management. Number three is wrong beliefs about rest wrong beliefs 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 b e i l i e f beliefs b e l i e f wrong beliefs about rest some of us have grown up being told that for instance let me ask you a direct question how many of you here have ever saved money and traveled for a vacation even to Benin republic how many of you have ever saved money to travel for a vacation just to go and rest? Let me, let's do a bit of, of sampling. How many of you have ever saved money? Your office did not send you. You didn't travel with your family. It wasn't planned by a group on your own. You saved money 
and travel just to go and rest and chill on your own. How many of you have ever done that? I want to see an answer. If you have, say, I have. If you haven't, say, I haven't yet. How many of you have ever done so? Traveling on your own terms, on your own cost, just to go and rest. I'm waiting for an answer. Olabisi is sending me peace. Well, peace does not mean yes or no. Which one? Is it, is it off the mic peace or is it yes so? Now, now so, now us be this. Which one of them? So, <laughs> Olabisi has. Abayobi is laughing. Why are you laughing? Answer your own now. <laughs> Joy Jane says, I haven't yet. Gina says, I haven't yet. Fantastic. So, ladies and gentlemen, um, Fumi says, I have never gotten that kind of money. Okay. Adenika Dediron says, I haven't. Zaid says, haven't yet. Fantastic. So, so the thing is, for me, nobody has money for vacation on a good day. We all make it. We all save it. So, 2015... I told myself that they have been a me they work, na me they hustle. What's the problem? And I told myself every year I must travel at least once on my own terms, not for work, not for business, not for anything on my own. So, but did I have the money at that time? No. So every year I would save and save and save and save and save. I'll gather and gather and gather and gather and gather. So I'll ask the agent, how much will it take to go to Egypt? He'll tell me, eh. Hey, you need to have 900,000 naira. I'll say, ah, 900,000. He's tell me ticket and hotel and excursion to here and here. I'll say, okay, no problem. I'll gather 50K from here, 20K from here, 10K from here, 50K from here, 100K from here. Over time, I'll gather 900K. I'll send it to him. It may be, in fact, I may not have, I remember traveling to Kenya. I had only $100 when I was leaving Nigeria. I saved money and bought tickets. It is visa at entry point. I had only $100. I said, this trip, I must go. I went and God showed up for me in Kenya. Somehow, somehow, some miraculous event happened. I got a five-star hotel all paid for. That's a miracle. I'm not asking you to thank God, though. But that was the last time I made that kind of error, though. But there are times when I've traveled with not so much cash, but every year I make sure I travel. Why am I saying this? You need to reprogram your mind and accommodate resting. Now, the fact that I'm saying travel does not mean it has to be foreign. That was just an illustration and an example. You can travel to Obudukatu Ranch. You can go to Mekong Gulf in Osho State. You can go to Ikogosi. You can go to Abel Okuta. You can go to any quiet location that, that catches your fancy. What matters is leave your normal routine and go and get some rest. Discourage your brain from thinking that rest is a taboo. Reprogram your brain. Some of us have absorbed this feeling of bad guilt that if I'm resting, if I go on a vacation, it's a waste of money. This money, Abba, I can pay school fees with it. This money, if I go to vacation with this money, how will my house rent be paid? How will my this one be paid? Well, the same way you raise the house rent is the same way you will raise your traveling cost. And guess what? When you come back, you are refreshed. You can do all over again and raise new monies. Don't limit yourself. You are not smaller than the money you are spending. You are actually bigger than the money you are spending. You create money by yourself. You create money by your thoughts. You create money by your actions. You create money by your by everything that you represent. So don't be afraid of spending because in the spending, you are making. Very, very important. Fumi Olufemi says, I can lodge in a hotel for a few days, right? Yes, but guess what? Make it better by lodging in a, in a Wawu hotel. Don't just go to some hotel down the street and say, ah, let me just go and lock up there and just drink malt and just watch TV and come back and say, be me to have lodged in a hotel. No, take yourself to colonnades in Ikoyi. Take yourself, in fact, save money, go to a co hotel, go and spend one night. Put yourself in a co hotel one night. Say, no be two people, no be people will get two heads, they sleep for here. Go and do it. It will blow your mind. Go to Sheraton, go to Protea Hotel on Adeni Jones. Save up 
Imagine that you save a hundred k, and you go to a hotel where per night is forty k or forty five k. Spend two nights. The feeling is different. You will sleep differently. When you get there, put off your phone. Connect to their Wi-Fi. Put off your phone so that nobody can call you. Nobody is calling you on Wi-Fi. You can browse as you want. You can do Facebooking and IG. Take pictures. Say yo 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 yo. You know you can even tag the location if you want to farms. But nobody should be able to call you. Go offline. Going offline is a significant strategy for resting. I can tell you categorically. Three weeks ago, I went offline completely. Off WhatsApp, off Facebook, off Twitter, off Instagram, off anything for days. There is a way it just helps you replenish and you're able to recover again. So these are the few thoughts I have with us tonight. And I want to promise you that if you can just follow through these cues and these tips, there are very few tips I've just shared, but if you can follow them up, you'll be as fresh and alive as you want to be. So please take note of this and go into 2021 better, better, better than you are today. God bless you all. Fantastic. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a lot of tips. In fact, when you were talking, when you were able to say that, oh, first outside, I say, ah, my one favorite way of doing is go to a hotel or find a resort with spring prams. Uh, yes, what's so that well. one name? And that one on the road is uh, Palm, it starts with a P or something. Yeah, yeah, I forgot it. I forgot. There are so many anyway. When yes. we Google, yes. there's so many options that uh, that you can use there. Yes, so, yes. if you have any questions, um, please post so that we can you want you can ask Coach Sam, you know, our next guest is ready and waiting on the line if you correct. have any questions correct 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 thank you so much okay. for putting this together All well right. done. thank you so much i want to ask something um in terms of workplace um burnout um yeah. sometimes you're not in control of your break time or whatever you may have yeah. a boss that says okay do this do this do this and maybe they are piling work on you so much and yeah. some of us tend to say, ah, let me not talk oh, so that I don't uh, suffer, you know, issues and all that. Yeah. How can yeah. one handle such situations? Fantastic. So my answer to that is what you can control, control. What you cannot control, just let it be. What you have control over is your mindset. When there are piles of work and there's no time in the office and your boss is not allowing you to work, psychologically, condition your mind that you're going to do well through that pressure. That's the first thing, psychologically. Some people are able to contain the pressure within their mind and, and try. So the first thing is psychologically accommodate the pressure, but secondly, any window you get, you must rest. Hmm. Because sometimes, even when we now leave the office, we now still continue in that frequency. That is why some people should learn, for instance, Learn to get fresh food, learn to get healthy food, like salad, like this, like this. Once you take this thing, it helps your body to recondition itself and start entering a rest mode. Mm -hmm. So you need to help yourself. When you cannot help yourself in the office, that is understandable. But when you are now out of the office, how do you reset? You need to help yourself when you have gone out of that environment. It's very helpful. Okay. Um, half size. Yes. yes. How do you burn out if it has to do with kids? How do you, I think the question is how do you avoid burnout? Burnout, burn burn out, yes. Well, the thing is that it's every family must develop a culture. You are not a slave in your family. That's one thing I've noticed with Nigerian families. We tend to say, My family is stressing me, my family is stressing me, my children are stressing me. Is your family, and you are not a slave in that family. So Sit down and create a culture. What do you want in your family? Express yourself. I say, okay, I need so 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 time of rest. I learned that from my dad. My dad makes sure that every Sunday, no matter how important you are, my dad will not give you a picture, he has to sleep. And my dad kept talking about it, he kept training us that see 
If you don't rest any day of the week on Sunday, you must rest. So it's a family, you, must, you need to sit down and ask yourself real questions. What do I really want and how can I achieve it? With children, yeah, I know sometimes it can be very difficult. What we do this day is if you have a family you trust, let your children go out and play with the family you trust once in a while. And take advantage mm -hmm. of what you to rest. Don't just say, eh, I can't let them, I don't let them go out, I can't let them go out. Well, you have to choose one. You must choose your hostel. Because you cannot drop them to sleep because you want to sleep. So you need to get them engaged so that you can take time out to rest. But for family, it's because it has the family. Okay, any other questions so that we can let CS go and rest? <laughs> <laughs> if you have any other, I'll give you five seconds and then we let CS go and rest and we Thank get ready for so our next. <laughs> Thank you so much. Apologies, I had network issues. <laughs> thank you, you Please take care. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for. Welcome. Yeah, all right then. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys, we're about to go to our next session. Um, and this session would even help us a lot. There's something, actually, for people who have gone through a lot of trauma. Uh, maybe they are being stigmatized, maybe there are, there are issues that they cannot speak about. It's about finding your voice. And I've learned that in finding my, people ask me, how do I cope? It's because I found my voice in telling stories about what I'm going through or what I do, you know, and it helps a lot. Um, one of the challenges is that we always worry about what other people think, but we don't realize that half of the time, even if they say one thing, they are moving on with their life, but ours is stuck. So it's very important to find our voice, and that's why we're going to be bringing up our next guest, Kule Pelemo. But we'll take this break in the meantime. My name is Miriam Lawani, and I'm the founder of Green Hero Recycling. Green Hill Recycling is um, a social enterprise that is addressing the poverty and unemployment issues in Nigeria using recyclable solid waste as a currency of exchange. The experience as an entrepreneur in the waste management sector has been bittersweet. It's been a roller coaster. The rewarding part is the fact that you can, you know, create jobs for people. Through waste, you can put food on the tables of people. No, I'm happy to be a woman. I don't think things would have worked any differently if I was a male. There are certain doors that open better because you're a woman. There's a soft spot, I, I believe, for women. And if women are charting this territory that men are also you know, able to survive or flourish in, I'm happy to be one of those women who are breaking barriers in the waste management sector. Fidelity Bank is one of the few SME-focused banks in Nigeria, and last year I got into the SME Connect pitching competition. I emerged second place, and I was given a millionaire to support my business. That fund went into um, helping to purchase a billing machine, so we've been able to move from collection to processing through the support of Fidelity Bank. I'll say to any female entrepreneur listening to me out there that there are no barriers anymore. If you are sure about what your what business your gut feeling is saying you should go into, please go for it. And while in the process, stay focused, stay resilient, and don't give up.
We are Fidelity. We keep our word. Kumli Pelemo, simply called KP, is committed to nation building. A multi-talented human capital and business development strategist, motivational speaker, singer, and compare extraordinaire, Kumli is passionate about helping individuals and corporate organizations achieve their dreams through his seizing strategies and skills in the knowledge business. Having spoken in several conferences across the nation and also trained thousands of people, Kunle holds the key to transforming organizations, individuals, and even nations. In 2017, he founded a suicide prevention and mental health awareness course, Leave and Not Die, with the headquarters in Lagos, Nigeria. He has certifications from suicide prevention and mental health from institutions such as Mental Health Academy in the UK, University of Glasgow, Philanthropy University, and many others. He is a global goodwill ambassador for humanitarian support and a Quinto Campingo SDG ambassador in Argentina. In March 2020, he was nominated by Digital World Project in UK as the 2020 Mental Health Camp Champion. Kunle loves watching football and writes jokes as well. Ladies and gentlemen, please let's welcome Kunle Kwelemo to the Positive and Wellness Summit as he speaks on finding your voice, speaking out through challenges in mental health and stigma. Hello, welcome Kunle. <laughs> Glad to Thank have you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Yeah, glad to have you. So you have your 30 minutes and I'll come back five minutes to the time to signal you that you're rounding up. All right, no problem. All right, no problem. Give Kalebo a lot of emojis, claps, welcome him into the platform of Positive Awareness Summit. <laughs> Thank you for having me. I sincerely appreciate this um, opportunity to come to speak to people about that very thing that I am passionate about. I'm passionate so much about creating mental health awareness in Nigeria and as well as even across Africa, extending it also to other parts of the world. And so, Auntie TA, thank you so much for uh, granting me the opportunity to also do what I feel is one of those things that I like doing best, that's speaking, and most importantly now, creating awareness about mental health. And today I am going to speak briefly on finding your voice, speaking out through challenges in mental health and stigma. Speaking out through challenges in mental health and stigma. At the end of this, it will be very, very, um, worthy of note that this will make everybody who is listening out there to become a bold speaker when it comes to your mental health. That it will grant you that opportunity for you to talk about whether you are going through one mental health issue or mental illness or something related to that, that you will have the boldness to speak out that we will begin to collectively work against every iota that is related to stigma or stigmatization when it comes to mental health. So that is the essence. Now, let me, let me quickly make you note one thing, and this is what I tell people whenever I want to you know, speak to them. I mean, sometimes when people come, then you begin to list, I mean, you begin to expect some someone that will just come over here or come on board and blow your mind, just blow your mind away. You know, um, I'm not going to blow your mind away right now today um, because I want you, I need your mind. I want you to use your mind. So the, the essence is that sometimes what we need to do are not really what we don't know but sometimes what we know that we fail to do or some of, those, some of those things that we do that we are not doing well. And basically that's what I have come to challenge you to do right in near today, to make you begin to do what you know that you might have not been doing or how you'll be able to do well in those things that you've been doing. 
So that is the essence. So that is what I am here to do today. I'm trying to challenge you to speak up, to speak out through challenges in mental health and stigma. I don't know if I could share my screen right now so I can have my slide shared with you as we continue. Yeah. Okay. I, I think um, you may have to send it to me. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think I have it done already. So I, but okay, if okay, that okay, is, yeah, I remember this. I you sent it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um. But if that is not possible, then I can go. I can go ahead. I can go ahead. But I feel, um, maybe I could relate a little bit better with people sharing my slide. But, we'll do that. Okay. We'll do that. You can be talking, and I'll get it done. All right. Okay. I'll, I'll, All right. No, I'll give me like no two problem. minutes. Yeah. All right, there's no problem. Yeah, thank you so much. Now, um, when we talk about mental health issue, I mean, it has been in like the back of the curtain in so many, for so many years in our country. And these challenges that we face is not peculiar to our country alone. As a matter of fact, issues about mental health do not get so much publicity in Africa generally. And I mean, it is supported by the United Nations and the World Health Organization about very poor data um, supported mental health cases in, in Nigeria as well as other parts of Africa. But some, some people have started coming up, people like myself and so many other bodies, so many other um, foundations have started coming out to create that conversation that mental health is lacking in Nigeria and across Africa. Because if you look at it generally, it holds a pivotal role in our general well-being. There is no general health without your mental health. And that is why you need to take cognizance of your mental health. There is what I call the, the, health, the health iceberg. I know we know the, the iceberg that, that you normally find in water, that you see a tip on top of the water, but the, a whole lot of mass is residing underneath that you don't even see. And if a ship is not careful sailing on, on the water and then do not take cognizance of that, that iceberg that you, you can only see the tip and then you hit the iceberg, somehow, if care is not taken, the ship or boat could capsize because there is a mass that you don't take note underneath. The same thing applies to our own health. I call it the, the health iceberg. And the tip that we normally take note of, that we normally see, it is comprised of our physical health. And our physical health comprises of our diet and exercise. And that will tell you how the world are so much focused on that thereby neglecting a whole part of our health system, which mental health is one of them. You have occupational health, all those ones are in the background. You have your occupational health, your environmental health, your mental health, those ones are lining, they are lining under that people don't even see. And that's why when you watch advert now, that I want to talk about people who are well, who are doing fine. When you talk about a kid who is doing well, he's either playing football or jumping or running, you know, because that is the focus. For you to be well, it's, you have to be physically well. You have to be doing physical exercise. That, that is what the world gravitates towards. But we have found out that a large percentage of your health system is generated by your mental health. And that is why it's so important for you to take cognizance of your mental health, not, not, not focusing only on one side because it goes a long way to, to, to determine a whole lot about you. Now, the question that we will ask now, I know maybe you, you must have had some people who have spoken in related to, I mean, in relation to me mental health, but I love to create a distinction between mental health and me mental illness mental health and mental illness you can you can hit the next the next slide now 
because a whole lot of people, when you hear, you can hit the next slide still. When you hear, when you talk about mental health, we confuse the two because although sometimes we hear the term mental health and think about mental illness, the two are not the same. The reason why I need to categorize these is because along the line, this will be helpful while we are talking about speaking out so that you will be able to understand that even each and every one of us, we are totally involved in what we are talking about in here today. Because when we talk about mental health now, a lot of people begin to think about mental illness. Not even in Nigeria, when you talk about mental, anything that has to do with mental health, they talk about madness. So that's why people find it so difficult to speak up sometimes because they don't want to talk about mental health because it is associated with lunacy, with madness. I mean, you know, when you when you speak to somebody that you might be having mental health issue, the next thing is they are, God forbid, you know, because they don't want to go to the psychiatric hospital. It is more than that. Hit the next slide. Because mental illness, they are such disorders that occur in the brain, like depression, schizophrenia, bipolar disorder, or OCD. Those are illnesses. But the fact still remains that these illnesses, they are like other illnesses. It, like you just coming openly to talk about you having malaria, like you coming openly to talk about you having dysentery, diarrhea, you having headache and all the rest. But people have so much created stigma around these illnesses. And it is our conversation that would definitely destigmatize this particular thing that we are talking about. Hit the next slide. But what is now mental health? Mental health, I like the definition that WHO gave to mental health because it is all encompassing. And if you see it critically, you will see that this is what everybody should take a look into. And when you take a look into it, you begin to pick one or two things from there and you find out that it applies to you so that you will not stigmatize somebody who had come up openly to speak about his mental health case. And the reason why maybe you are not speaking up is because maybe you don't even understand. Maybe you are not aware. Mental health is defined, according to the World Health Organization, as a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential, can cope with the normal stress of life, can work productively and fruitfully, and is able to make contribution to his or her community. The first thing you will note in that definition, I like this definition because it says mental health is a state of well-being. It's a state of well-being. So that state is that state that you attain. So sometimes you may drift off that state, but all you need to do is to put yourself back up in that state. Whenever I want to I want to explain this definition. I use water as an example. Water exists in three critical states or three important states. You have the, 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 the solid, the liquid, and gas. And those states are totally determined by the exposure of that particular water to a certain level of temperature. If it is freezing, then it's solid. If it is the normal temperature, then you have the room temperature, the water in the room temperature, that's liquid. And if it is getting to the boiling point, then it begins to evaporate, then you have the gaseous state of water. So that means whatever you expose yourself to when it comes to your health, health and so many other things that, has to, that will definitely deal with your mental health, it is what will determine that state. So each time you need to now regulate to bring yourself into that state that you want. So, and then you look at that definition, it talks about a state of well-being in which every individual realizes his or her own potential. The next one, I like it, can cope with the normal stress of life. So that does not dispute the, the stress that you are gonna have in life. You are still gonna get exposed to traffic, you're still going to get exposed to things that you don't like. Someone is still going to get mad at you. Your boss is still going to, is still going to talk to you. And then you're still going to experience some socioeconomic distress as a result of the economy of the country. But your ability to cope is what really matters. And if you find it out truly, there is no one who is free of the stress of life. Because in one way or the other, stress is a way of creating a balance for us in life. So your ability to cope is now what matters. And that's what your mental health talks about. 
And if you now see that everybody is involved in one way or the other, you can cope with the normal stress of life. You want to work productively and fruitfully, and you are able to make contribution to your community, then you will find out that there is no need to create a stigma around somebody who comes out to talk about his or her mental health, because we are all in the same ship. We are all in the same boat together. Hit the next slide for me. So having defined that, it is important for us to note some critical statistics about mental health generally in the world. It is said that about 30% of Nigerian population suffer from mental illness. It's huge. And I am so sure because of our, I mean, irregularities in data collation and all those stuff, this might so much be more than this. And considering what the world has experienced in a couple of months ago now, uh, the, the pandemic and so many other related issues, I'm sure it will have skyrocketed. Then one in six of us will experience mental health problem in any given week. Take six people and put them in a room. One of them will experience mental health problem in any given week. One in 30 experience post-traumatic stress disorder. That's PTSD. I mean, you see a whole lot of happenings now. As a matter of fact, after the protest, I've gotten a whole lot of people calling me and talking to me about their personal experience, what they witnessed, and such things replay in their memory. And it causes a kind of trauma in them. And that is what PTSD is all about. It's a kind of disorder as a result of what you either experienced or you witnessed. So some people witnessed some killing, some people witnessed brutalization, some people witnessed a whole lot of things. So it creates experience in them. And then we have one in 30 experience that kind of thing. And that it has to do with your mental health. Children with anxiety disorder are less likely to receive treatment. And then the last one, depression rate wrote, rose to 65% with the advent of smartphone. And if you are using smartphone, if you don't use it so well, there is a way it can pile up a kind of mental health related issue in you so that you find out that each and every one of us, the reason why I'm saying this is to lay the foundation that each and every one of us in one way or the other might have mental health related issue, but our ability to handle it starts with what we want to talk about in here today. That's how to find our voice and begin to discuss and create conversation and create awareness about this particular matter. The time has come to shun the stigma and begin to speak up. Here the next slide. Because of time, I got to move so, so fast. Now, having said all this now, what are the mental health help challenges? What are the mental health help challenges? Before we can begin to get the help, let, let us know the, the challenges that we are facing. The first challenge we face is the awareness challenge. There had been poor mental health awareness in not only Africa, it's a global issue. People don't want to talk about it. But now conversations are going on to encourage people to speak up. Because when you speak up, it is then your problem will be addressed. And there is no shame in it. We'll get to that, that point in time when we get there. So there had been poor mental health awareness. And that is why it is difficult to get help sometimes. And the next one, we have stigmatization. And this stigmatization can come in two forms. We have the public stigma and then the self-stigma. Public stigma is as a result of what people are talking about it. And then self-stigma is even what you yourself perceive about it. So if the public are not even talking about it, if you cook up something that if I talk out, if I speak up, what will people say about me? How are people going to take that? What's going to be the reaction of the people about me? And then you begin to see yourself in one way or the other. You begin to see yourself as someone who is of less importance in the society. That is self-stigma. At the same time, there is also a way the conversation that people are creating around, ah, look at that person, is having mental health issue, is having this mental illness, is having this, is having that. Not knowing that he himself is not even free from that. It's just like a pot calling kettle black. That is the, that's been the issue. But because we are not speaking so much and trying to create conversation to destigmatize, then it begins to gain more ground. And then you see people refrain the more from talking about a particular about a particular issue. And the next thing is failed legislation. 
I must tell you critically that in Nigeria now, we are still operating very related to what we have in 1914 called the Lunancy Act. Lunancy Act of 1940, the, the Colonial Act. That's what we still use in order to address mental health issue in Nigeria. And the world has moved on. It's, it's, it, it, I mean, a whole lot of things that happened. And that's why it's even, it's, 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 it's difficult for um, people to speak up because their rights had not been addressed when it comes to legislation. The government policy is not also talking about their access to health services and all other necessary things. So all these are the challenges that we have. But the truth of the matter and the good news is for every challenge, there is a solution. And that is what we've come to speak in here today. Hit the next slide. So having said that, um, there is now what, what I call the, the effect of all this thing. And that is called anxiety. But if you check the, the spelling, it's like a T, anxi anxiety. And that's why people begin to feel somehow, what if I taste word? That's the tea now talking now. What if I'm too cold? What if I'm too hot? What if I'm just right and I can never live up to it again? What if nobody likes me? Then you begin to now have a whole lot of things as a result of the stigma that people are creating. And you begin to have this anxiety. You begin to have conversation that starts with what if? What if people don't like me? What if I speak up and somebody shuns me? What if I speak up and I, I really don't get access to what I want? What if somebody betrays me? What if somebody laughs at me? And then you begin to have all these things running in your head and all those things will begin to create more and more problem in you because it's anxiety. It doesn't work well in your body. It begins to create trauma. It begins to create things that your body will not really, um, will not really like. So that is one of the effects of not speaking up. So why do we need to speak up? Why do we need to speak up? Let us see what the next slide says. Why speak up? And that is what we are talking in here today. The essence of speaking up will definitely reduce the surge in mental health issue and mental illness that we have in our world right now. If you're having any problem that has to do with mental health, speak up. It will help in reducing the surge because the more you keep it to yourself, the more it aggravates. And the more you deny yourself of whatever solution that is possible that you, may have, you might have accessed by speaking up. And the truth of the matter is you have a whole lot of people who still don't believe in in this thing that we are talking about. And that's the essence of creating conversation around it. If somebody speaks about mental health related issue, they think it has to do with one, one, one witch in the village. You know, if somebody is having any mental illness, and that's why you see those kids who are having mental illnesses, they don't get access. Some, some people take them to the wrong places. And then some of them are even beaten. And that's, you know, they beat them up. They, 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 they think, um, I mean, it's a demon that is responsible for that. And those are the things that legislation will definitely, I, I, I mean, address when it comes to pay, when it comes to play, because it is the right of those people, those kids to go for medication. And so when you notice such, it is time to speak up in your kids, even in yourself. And another thing that speaking up does is that it helps reduce the stigma. It helps reduce the stigma. By the time you speak about it, somebody, somebody else speaks about it, then it begins to spread. And then the next point then will be made known because it will now make you know that you are not alone. You are not alone. It is not peculiar to you. The way somebody else is suffering from such really, I mean, such thing, someone else there is suffering from me. So that is it. I am not alone. You are not alone. So let us keep speaking up. That is the essence of speaking up. And another thing speak up, speaking up does is that it helps with necessary inter interventions. So it is when you speak up that we will know whatever intervention that we will need to make. So that is it. And then there is one word that I will want you to write down. This particular phrase, this particular sentence, 
wherever you are right now you just put it down you might write it in bold letters so that you will not forget and then you go back to read for it the essence of speaking up is it i mean comes from you realizing the fact that asking for help is not a sign of weakness asking for help is not a sign of weakness i don't know wherever you are right now wherever you are listening or you're watching you can repeat that to yourself that asking for help is not a sign of weakness so it is it is when you ask for help that that even it even shows that you are you are, you are strong it takes it takes strength to ask for help i mean it displays your strength when you ask for help so don't see yourself as being a weakling when you ask for help. So that's what should push you to ask for help because asking for help is not a sign of weakness. There is no shame about it because there is one thing I call the labeling secret. Because The, the, the secret of labeling originates from either the, I mean, the labeler or you. So um, it, it, is your, it, it is now your choice to not accept the label. So if someone calls you something, it's like putting a label in a cloth and the label originates from the labeler. But if you accept it, that means you will let the labeler attach the label to your cloth or to you. So it is now your choice. It is in within your power to not accept the label from the labeler. And this is how labeling, which is stigma now, this is how it works. It works with your perception. And you know what your perception does? Your perception is your reality. So when somebody talks to you about that particular thing that, okay, people who are like this, this is how they behave, this is who they are, don't talk to this kind of people. And then you begin to perceive yourself in like manner because you have accepted that label. You begin to see yourself that way and it works for you. And there is a circle in labeling. It comes from the outside, it gets within and it finds its way back to the outside. It comes from somebody, it comes to you, and then you program it, and then you perceive yourself as such, and then it will now come outside. It begins to affect the way you relate with people. And that is why it is important that you destigmatize anything that has to do with your mental health by speaking up because asking for help is not a sign of weakness. Hit the next slide. Let's move so fast because of our time. So I come up with some key lessons from some of my materials and I, I, I found out that it's going to help you in finding your voice. This is the third of them. I just put it as one here. You will see number three there. You need to now start spending time with people who are good for your mental health. It will help you when you are speaking up. You don't need to, you, you need to spend time with people who are good for your mental health. People who will not push push your mental health away, anything that has to do with your mental health or put it down. People who will, who will not even aggravate, I mean, whatever you are going through, people who will be a sucker to you. So spend time with people who are good for your mental health. Next thing, next slide. What other thing? Then this is very important. This is very important. You know, I've, I've said it that the things that I want to say to you are the things that maybe you know or possibly you don't do, or maybe you, you are not doing well. If it is harming your mental health, it is time to log off. If it is harming your mental health, it is time to log off. Maybe you are so much, I mean, you have been focusing so much on the negativities that the social media is giving to you. You have the control power. You have the control button. Log off. There is no crime in it. If it is harming your mental health, whatever, if it's an association, if it's going to a place, if it is harming your mental health, it is time to log off because it has to do with your health. Next slide, please. And then you have to also practice what I call the OK strategy. The OK strategy. And what are the OK strategies now? Let me list some of them. It's in the next slide. The OK strategy. A whole lot of things that we think are not OK are so much OK. It is OK to cancel a commitment. Sometimes you just want to overrun yourself. You just want to overwork yourself. I know Coach Sam just spoke about burnout. Yeah. Sometimes you do and do too much until you are totally burned out. It is OK to cancel a commitment sometimes. It is okay to not answer that call sometimes. You want to be on your phone all the time. You are available all the time. You want to pick that call all the time. 
it is okay to not answer that call sometimes. It is okay to change your mind. It is okay to want to be alone. Sometimes you, you deserve that moment of being alone. Being alone but not lonely because you are your friend. You are, your, you are the best companion to yourself. Be alone. Put that phone away. Put that phone in silence. Lie down on your bed and have a good rest. You might not even be sleeping. You might sleep or otherwise. You might not be sleeping, but just be there. Be there alone. It is okay. Don't think that you are weird. It is okay to take a day off. It is okay to do nothing sometimes. It is okay to speak up. It is okay to let go. I promise you it is okay. If you consider this strategy, it will help you a lot, help your mental health as well, and as well help you speak up. And then there is one thing that you also need to do when it comes to helping your mental health, and it is in the next slide. You have to take cognizance of your physical health. You take cognizance of your physical health. And you know what your physical health is all about? Your physical health is about your diet and exercise. Your body had been conditioned by God naturally to help you when it comes to certain things. That is why there are certain chemicals in your body called hormone or neurotransmitters that is released in your body to help you. Some of them make you feel good and some of them are released by this diet that we see, that the food that we eat sometimes. Maybe time will not permit us. Maybe some other times we, we could talk about the food and mood, the relationship between your food you eat and the mood. So somehow there are some hormones that are released as a result of the food you eat. So watch the meal that you eat and then take time sometimes to also exercise yourself. And one exercise that is good, you know, it's not only about going to the gym. There is one exercise called the breathing exercise. You can sit down in your room and breathe. And there is a way you breathe in, breathe out. It's called conscious breathing. And then somehow you have exercised your body and you will release some hormones in your body. There is an hormone called endorphins. It is called natural painkiller. So if you have done exercise to an extent, your body will want to relieve you of that pain. It releases that hormone and that hormone comes, comes out. There are some hormones that are called, that are called um, the feel-good hormones. They make you feel good naturally. And so those are the things that you need to take cognizance of. So take a cognizance of your physical health, which comprises of diet and exercise. And then do not forget what we have been saying repeatedly, that asking for help is not a sign of weakness. As a matter of fact, if there's anything that I want you to take home from this particular time that I have spent, it is the fact that you need to ask for help whenever you are in need of help. Because asking for help is not a sign of weakness. That's about that. And then I think there is a couple of information that I might pass around because um, I really care about your mental health. Can we just, um, just keep sliding one after the other. Let me quickly pass the information. Yeah, next slide, next slide, next slide. So it would be, um, it would be a way of helping us totally. Okay, um, if we don't have that, let me just, there is a program that I run on AP Radio UK and MZ Radio London. It's about your mental health. You can listen it's a, every Friday. You can follow me for the link so that, it is good for you to at least now begin to do things that has to do with your mental health. Listen to programs. I mean, listen to conversations. And I really want to appreciate um, Auntie TA for this particular forum, whereby we talk about the mental health of the people in this particular conference or summit, so to speak. So it, those are the things we need to create conversations around in order to begin to get more aware, get more cognizance about the mental health of the world and then our own personal mental health as well. So, and as well, there is um, there is an organization that also gives a mental health care at a very, very affordable, they are making it accessible and affordable and it's called My Care Body. So you can go online, www.mycarebody.org 
and then search for it so that you get access for as low as even a thousand naira you get access to professionals who will talk to you about that i care so much about your mental health and i want you to stay mentally healthy always that's my time ladies and gentlemen i appreciate you Thank you so much. I was trying to, the screen froze, so that's why I couldn't show the next two slides. <laughs> no problem, no problem. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. I want to see some emotions, fire, clapping, you know. Okay, somebody said, speak up, Soros, okay? <laughs> nah, that's the word, Soros, okay. <laughs> yeah. So this is powerful. Powerful, yes, indeed, it was powerful. If you have any questions um, you want to ask specifically concerning you and um, speaking up, because I know a lot of us sometimes have challenges because of fear of, like he said, what somebody else will say, what would the other person say, and all that. So if you have any questions, please put it forward. Um, I'm sure they will, he would gladly answer them, you know. And one thing I, I, I realize, um, is in terms of speaking up yeah. um yeah we, we we may be able to ignore um external people that's what i call them external people who are not necessarily close to us but when it comes to family um we find that okay like a family member or people will say don't talk don't say anything don't keep quiet don't let uh Lagbaja know what's going on so we have been instilled in our mind the subconscious that we've learned that we're not supposed to say anything Mm. regardless of what we're going through. How do we um, overcome such issues, especially when the person who is telling us not to do it is a very close family member? Yeah, um, I think one very key thing is what we are doing right now so that everybody, including our family members now, begin to get aware that stigmatization is totally not it. Stigmatization is totally wrong. So awareness is very, very important. And then there is one thing that is important that possibly is gaining ground in our world today now. And that is the place of, of the professionals. That's mm. the place of the professionals. You know, I don't know how some people feel when they just um, go, just say that you want to talk to a mental health professional, you know, and you feel so proud about it because you know that those are the people who are well trained in that particular field to help you. So sometimes instead of instead of talking to someone who is going to talk you down, you can speak to a professional about that particular issue. And then it's going to guide you in what to do. So creating awareness about it and the place of professional is very, very key. It's very important. Yeah, Fumi says you can even ask those families and they turn you down. Uh, you know, next time you won't be able to speak up again. Mm, yeah, you're, you're, you're right. You're right. So that that is the thing. So that those are part of the things that we are coming into feel now as professionals. You once you have access to people who can definitely attend to you, then they will help you. They will give you the necessary support you need, and then it will now be possible for you as a person to help those who are if you are your family members as well. I know this mm. thing takes, yeah, it takes a lot of energy. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of awareness, but we must not stop. We have to keep creating conversation. You know, there was a time, there was a time malaria is like that in our world. You know, yeah, that if you have malaria, people, people will put hand on head like this. Do you understand? So until we demean stigma, until we begin to demean stigma. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that is that that is when we will find our voice okay abayami is asking our mental health experts working towards getting better legislation in nigeria okay i must say this clearly now that the current um national assembly have made a great progress in giving us the national mental health bill and it has passed the first and second reading 
and it has mm. even passed the public hearing. So they are coming up with that. So the National Assembly, this current National Assembly is making, and it's as a result of conversation from professionals as well, that they need to push for it. So I think very soon, if they accelerate the passing of the bill, it will be a plus in that sector. All right. Okay. So um, if there's any place, you were mentioning um, somewhere that they can go for help because people always find it, if, where can I go, where can I go? I don't have, yeah. I don't have money to, to, to go or pay somebody a lot of money. So mm. where, where can somebody go that you recommend okay. that it's not too oh, expensive? Too expensive, yeah. Like mm. I said, I spoke about, so if you want to write it down wherever you are, www.com my care body you can just take a look at my, my shirt now my okay. care body m y c a r e b u d d y my care body dot org dot okay, org. org yes with a thousand naira with a thousand naira you can book what we call an iron session iron session and a professional will be there to talk to you and to recommend what you would do and to recommend what you do mycarebody.org okay somebody is asking a question what if you speak up and they use it against you how do you manage that yeah so i think uh, that's to do with what i said the other time you know um stigma comes with that um uh, that concept of labeling because you want mm. to put a label on that particular person you know labeling is a perception coming from somebody and then hanging it on someone else so mm. if you do not so what i do do tell people that you leave label to labeler leave the label to labeler so it is your duty now not to accept that perception that somebody wants to hang on you. So once you don't accept that, it will not dictate how you carry yourself, how you walk, and then that power is taken away from that person. Because if you accept that, you are giving the power to the labeler. But if you refuse and demean whatever the person is saying, then you are giving power to yourself. So that is it, give power to yourself. Do not walk your do not walk and then do not live your life based on what the labeler is saying. Leave the label mm -hmm. to the label. Let me just give a very clear example now. The logo of brands that we see now is as a result of our perception. If you see Nike logo, if you see this logo, if you see Adidas logo, when you wear it, it comes with a kind of thing in your perception that you are wearing a very world-class logo, and that's how you will carry yourself. But let's let's flip the script now. If it's a bad logo, a poor logo that you don't like, the same way it will act in your perception. So if you demean, if you demean whatever logo somebody wants to give you, then it will not work on you. So that is yeah. what I can talk exactly. about that. Yeah, leave labeling to okay. the labeler. Do not take the label. Do not take the label. Okay. Hafsa is asking where can one get professionals? I think he mentioned the website, yeah. which I'll put up yeah. again. Yeah. Like yeah. Body body dot org. Yes, org. yes. You can get professionals yes. there. Thank you so much, Ule, for inspiring the, us with your message. And talk. I, I know, I, I hope a lot of people will take out of it. One thing I realized that if if we constantly worry about what other people say or worry mm. about what other people think, we will not mm. be able to move on with our lives. And yeah. it's important that when we move on, we realize that we're also helping somebody else in that year. And that's what Definitely. God has brought us here to do, to help other people, not necessarily help ourselves. All right. Thank you so much. All right, guys. Pleasure. Next. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. Next up is our game. So we are going to win some data before we end this session. We'll be, you. I'll bring on our quiz master and um, you'll win some data to, to be able to continue watching and other things. <laughs> so I'm bringing up Toby now. Uh, so don't go. Um, you have the opportunity to win data. Hi, Toby. Hi, Auntie Toyin. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Right. Yeah. So while you are 
putting up. There's another post I forgot to announce when um, Coach Sam was on. There's also a place you can get information and videos about your mental health and other issues, emotional state and other um, issues. It's a website and um, they have a subscription, 500, 1,000, to be able to watch um, certain videos, which can also help you as well. So I'll put that in the chat box and um, take it away, Toby. All right. Hi, guys. I'm sure you're having a swell moment. It has been a great roller coaster since Friday. And today we're having the grand finale this evening. So just stay tuned. So to keep you going, we're going to have our quiz for today. And this quiz is going to be very exciting. Today's focus is who said this? Who said this? So we're going to have two questions and we're going to look for just six winners. So for each of the question, we have three winners and it's going to be the fastest finger. You just have 30 seconds to respond. The moment you hear the question, you type in the answer within 30 seconds. So the first three people to type in the correct answer becomes the winner for that question. So here comes the first question. Are we ready? Let's start rocking our brain, rocking our minds. The first question, remember I said, who said this? So if you have been in our program since, you'll be able to answer this fast. So the, what's the first question? The first question is, who said this to enjoy work-life balance, you have to be intentional. To enjoy work-life balance, you have to be intentional. So which of our resource person said this? Time starts now. The first three, our Mark Collector, Debbie, is there to collate so you have 30 seconds, 30 seconds to respond. After 30 seconds, the game will burst. Ten more seconds. So, Debbie, once I say stop, don't pick any name again. All right, stop. So the first question has been said. So I'm going to collate with it. Who are those that responded and those who got the right answers? Now, I'm going to go to the next question now. Remember, we only have 30 seconds to respond with answers. And after 30 seconds, we will take our screenshots to know those who responded fast. So this is the next question. Remember, we're saying, who said this? Who said this? So listen attentively. Rest is not Rest is not a taboo. Do deprogram your mind from the negative thoughts. Rest is not a taboo. Deprogram your mind from negative thoughts. So 30 seconds. Who said this? Let's see the first three people that can respond and get the answer. I hope we are taking notes. We have, fact, we have 20 seconds. <laughs> All right. All right. Stop. So, Debbie, help us collect the answer. So, we have been able to do the fastest fingers for today, and we have achieved this together. Please stay tuned. We're going to have a great time this evening. We're still going to have um, two more speakers with a great keynote speech. Then we're having our debate. It's going to be hot like fire. You can't afford to miss that debate. You're welcome back, Auntie. <laughs> yeah, great job, great job. Uh, for those of us, I've seen some winners already. Yeah, I've seen some winners. <laughs> Lovely. I won't say anything. Won't say anything. Mm -hmm. some, Lovely. But some are not winning it, but we have seen some winners. Yeah, um, and that's good. So, um, guys, we are ending this session. We'll be back at 6 o'clock sharp. You cannot afford to miss Triple A, Alex Ade. Femi, he's going to be speaking on building positive relationships. Are you building wow. the type of relationships that when you surround yourself with them, they will impact your life, they will help you? All this one about somebody saying negative things about you, you have to be deliberate about 
who you surround yourself with so that you can move from one level of glory to another. So please mm. don't meet it. Six o'clock sharp, Alex, Ade, Ade Femi, Triple A will be on. And then we'll be talking about how to manage our health with a skin note speaker, preventive health. You know, there's always a lot of issues. We hear kidney damage, kidney, somebody is raising money for kidney issues, organ issues, mm. these issues. The, there are preventive ways to help reduce these mm. challenges. And this is what our keynote speaker, who is a very great consultant in this aspect, will be coming to talk about. So tell somebody who you feel to know about all this to come and listen and be impacted. Thank you. Till next time at six o'clock sharp. We'll be back. Six. See you then. Yes, right. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Tonya Dijola, and I have been living with sickle cell for the past 50 years. Many people with this disorder do not have the moral and particularly the financial support needed to overcome it. So we decided to do something about it. We started sickle cell advocacy with the aim of making society more aware about sickle cell and encouraging people with the disorder through moral, financial and psychological support. Sami is, is an NGO dedicated to help people living with SCD, actually, they provide the best free clinic, free drugs, and lots more. When I come to Sami, I feel free, I feel lively. I feel like I'm with my family, with people that understand me fully, well enough to know what's wrong, and people I can confide in. I've been coming here since 2015. By that time, I had um, back pain. They asked us to go for x-ray. And then Sami, they were the ones that gave us the money for the x-ray. We came back, we told them the feedback that we had done the x-ray. They said it's scoliosis. And since then, they have been giving us drugs. Everything they have been giving us, all the drugs, is free. From that 2012, they have been coming. And aside from the, apart from the benefits we get through the drugs, then the check up, we will meet other children and other people with the disorder. And you will know that, yes, even with, with the disorder, there's still hope. I started SAMI uh, more out of a calling than anything else because I've been living with sickle cell for over five decades now. And um, I had a tremendous life living with sickle cell. Uh, but sometime in my life, uh, I wrote an autobiography and I was invited to a TV program um, back then. And um, somebody was like, okay, why don't you be an advocate for people with sickle cell? And I was like, no, that's not my, my problem. I have my own issues. But God, should I, should I say, forced my hand to start this NGO when I had a call from somebody who said, He's living with sickle cell. His parents don't want him to go to school because they feel he's going to die anyway. And that's when I realized there was really an issue that had to be dealt with. And that's how I started the NGO. And basically it's to help people living with sickle cell and their families to live healthy, productive lifestyles. So I realized we had to be more involved with the people with sickle cell. It's not enough to just motivate them or inspire them. We had to get them to understand their health is very important in managing. And what we realize is that a lot of times because of financial issues or because of the challenges of going to a public um, health service or public hospital in this country, people leave their health issues till it's very late and then they either need more money to solve the problem or they, they lose their loved one. So we decided to start a clinic to be a bridge between the person living with sickle cell and the hospital so that when we spot anything, we'll be able to notify them and if possible, help them so that they can get attention at an early stage. So we started this um, free clinic where we provide free drugs. We have doctors who come and consult on the, on the monthly basis. And uh, we found that that has reduced the number of times people have had to go to hospitals it has reduced the number of times uh, people have faced 
major challenges in terms of their healthcare because we've been able to spot where the challenges lie and empower them. Especially the medication has been so much of great help because most, most of the time the parents can't afford to buy the drugs and when they see free drugs is an opportunity to help the child to live better and then uh, focus more on other issues rather than their health because we're helping them with their health. Here are the things to do to avoid getting or spreading the coronavirus. Always wash your hands thoroughly with soap and water. Carry with you and use an alcohol-based hand sanitizer at all times. Avoid touching your face unnecessarily. When you cough or sneeze, do so in a bent elbow and not in your hands. If you cough or sneeze on a tissue, dispose immediately. Endeavor to wear a face mask when you go out. Dispose of the face mask properly after use. Should you feel unwell and show symptoms, call the NCDC and follow their instructions. Stay safe. Maintain social distance. Fidelity cares about you.